G'day folks, well this is the Dreidel 3x3 from Lim Cube, absolutely brilliant cube and I've been playing with this a lot and if you have a really good close look you'll see that the stickers look absolutely perfect, they're no worse for wear whatsoever which is quite phenomenal, so there's no peeling, there's no anything, this puzzle is in great shape and it turns like a dream for the complexity of it and it's a really good solve but it is a challenging solve, there's no question, this is a challenging solve so this will be a fairly long video I think not exactly sure how I'm going to edit it, but certainly will be everything you need to know to get it solved. This is how I solve it. Don't know how anybody else solves it. Okay, so in terms of scrambling, obviously we can just scramble as a normal 3x3 three three initially, and you can do that as much or as little as you like. Uh, it probably won't really make that much difference, to be honest, in the end. What we want to do then is, what I do, is turn really all of these pieces just... 60 degrees like that uh, so that they're all lined up doesn't really matter which way and now we can go and start moving them around and maybe over this way and just keep them like that and what that's going to do is get um, if we turn it back and have a look we'll see what it's achieved it's broken up some of these pieces. Obviously it hasn't broken them all of them up because we couldn't do that, so we need to keep doing that. But you can see it really has started to take shape there. Uh, I'll keep doing that. Once we're done, what you want to do then is just turn some of them like that and then start scrambling and turn back because what that's going to do is create uh, pieces like this, which then stick out. That'll shape shift the thing completely, and that's what we want. Let me keep scrambling it. I'll come back soon. Okay, well when it's nicely scrambled, the very first thing you want to do is just turn any corners that are like that so that the corners at least are back to normal form. And so it looks like a cube but it's got bits sticking out from all over it. Now it doesn't matter which one you start with, what you want to do is start by finding any piece like this. So these chiral edges here, that pink needs to have a pink piece attached to it. So we're going to see if there is a pink piece and there is a pink piece sticking out. We're looking for one that's sticking out, and we'll just see if it's the correct one. You'll know what I mean in about two seconds. That is the correct one, because what we're going to do is turn this corner to put the pink part there, and that pink piece there comes down and attaches to it, and then we turn that corner back. And you can see that now that is partly reduced, this little part here. I've got a yellow to do as well. So the yellow is on the right-hand side, so I need to have a yellow piece in this position. And so normally at the start there's pieces everywhere so you can quite easily do it. We'll just see if this one's going to work. It is. And so uh, where did that go? This is part of the issue. They get lost. Um, the yellow pink. There it is. Okay, so the yellow's there and you can see, just ignore that one, you can see that yellow is in the correct position. So what I want to do now is turn it this way, bring down that yellow and return it. Now I can turn this back if I want, but it doesn't really matter. Now some things to note, the first thing is that that's now a reduced part. That's good, that's one out of well, however many there are, um, 24 of them to do. And that wasn't too hard. Uh, the second thing to note is the, the different bits that it moves when we do that. So if I bring this up, obviously it's going to involve this piece that we're trying to make, the one that's sitting here. It's also going to involve this piece, that unreduced part there, because when I bring it up, it actually splits it up. So it splits there and there. So I don't want to have one that I've already done in that position. I want to have something that I haven't done. And thirdly, it also obviously involves a piece back here, which we note. Now essentially, that's what you've got to keep doing until you get down to the last three or four of them. And so I'll just do another one and uh, cut through quite a bit, I think. Let's have a look. We've got a blue and a grey here. So I'm looking for a grey piece that's sticking up that I can put back here. In fact, there's one right there. So that's good. So we turn it up, bring it down, put it on. And now I'm looking for a blue piece that can be placed here. And again, this are all almost always happens at the start. There's so many pieces sticking up, you can easily find them. So we turn that, bring it on, and turn it down. Now, 
if you're anything like me and you've got a bit of OCD, what you're going to want to do is, now that you've got two of them, is turn them up and put them on the same edge. It does not matter that they are not the same type. It's irrelevant at the moment. And it certainly doesn't matter that they're not next to the large edge in the middle. Also irrelevant. I would then say, OK, there's my bottom face. I'm going to now try and search for some others here and keep doing that. Now, the first difficulty you have is when you run out of uh, pieces, either pieces in this position or pieces sticking up. So I'll do a few of these and cut back in when we get to that point. Well, when you get down to this sort of point, and at this point on mine, I've got all of the first two layers reduced, and on the top layer, I've got that one and that one reduced. So I've got one, two three, four, and I've got a couple of these bits floating around. You, as I said, you can do this at any time, but it just to me it makes sense to do it near the end when it gets quite a bit trickier. What we want to do is first of all get these pieces that are on the corners there into their correct edge positions. And to do this, I'm going to make use of a really simple three cycle. Let's have a look at it now. Well, we're going to do the basic move. We're going to carry it out five times. So up, down and undo those moves. That's one of them. We'll do that five times and see what happens. Here we go, that's done. And the first thing to note is that only three pieces have been moved. All of these uh, slanty pieces are back where they were and just three of these triangle slash uh, chiral edges are moved as well. And so that's a nice little three cycle for them, really simple to carry out. And just to note the direction is that this yellow blue piece was here, so it's coming from the back towards the front. We can use that, obviously we can use the mirror as well to move these pieces around as we need to. All right, so what that means is because the piece movement uh, is going this way, we don't need to worry really, we just have to have these pieces in the correct areas. So for example, um, I want to move this triangle down to here. I want to have that in an edge position and I want to have another edge position go to here. So I'll just put this one over to here for now because that's not yet done. Obviously I don't want to disturb things that I've already uh, made. Uh, so we will get that out of the way. Okay, so what I want to do now is have that grey piece go to here. So I'm going to do the three cycle and it's really quick, it's really easy. And you can see that's done. That little grey piece is there. I've got edge pieces correctly positioned. I need to do the same sort of thing with this one now. So I've got that piece that needs to go back to an edge, that needs to go to an edge. Um, obviously here I need a piece that has, where is it? That, that green piece is the only one that's in the wrong position. So I need to have that there before I start. And so, let's get that out of the way. I'll put it there first with some setups. And now once again, I can move across and it's going to affect that and that, which is fine. It's also going to affect that one and I don't want to disturb that. So I better put something like that into the position. So in other words, we're using a piece that is not yet reduced. And now I can do exactly the same thing that I did before. Okay, now what we'll see, when that's done, there will be all of these little chiral edges will be in their correct position, and all of these little triangles will be in their correct positions, and the only thing we'll have is these pieces sticking out. So at that point, what you want to do is just make sure that the, the stuff you're playing around with, or all the pieces that are reduced are down the bottom and in the middle here, and the stuff that you want to use is going to be up in this region here, because that's the piece movement. Oh, in fact... What we're going to do is slightly different. It's involving the same thing. Let's have a look at it on a solve puzzle now. Well, on this solved cube, what we're going to do is firstly do the standard move, 
which is to turn this up here and then bring that down and undo those two moves. Now that being done, you can see that a, a number of pieces have been moved, but on this middle slice only that one piece has been moved. And so what we can do now, we really only need to turn that middle slice, but it's just easier to turn both of them, the bottom one as well. Having done that, we undo the first four moves. So instead of turning this up first, we turn that down. And then we bring this one back and we'll see that all that's happened is three pieces have been moved, three of these type of pieces. A couple of things to note, the direction is here to here to here, so it's coming down this way. And the other thing to note is what happens to the orientation of the pieces. The, the yellow piece that was here has retained its orientation. It was flat there, it's still flat. The other two pieces, so the piece that was here and the piece that was here, have both changed their orientation, so they're now sticking up. That's what's going to be important to know. Obviously we can do this on the mirror as well. So if we turn this first and bring that down, doing it on the right here, this time we can turn that way and then undo the moves, bring that back and we'll see once again three pieces. The movement is from the top down and across and again this piece has retained its orientation and the other two have changed. Right, so you can see that in order for that to work I need one piece here, one piece here and one over here if I'm doing it on the left. So let's think about what has to go where. Well first of all we'll whack that one around there so the green is what we're aiming to place somewhere. We say where do I need to place a green? Well there's a green that can be filled there. Is there another green? There is another green. Let's see if that is going to be the right sort of one. It is indeed. So we know from that three cycle that this will come down and flatten into that green position. We also know the pink will go across here and retain its orientation. It will stay flat. So I want to see if there's a third piece which requires, and I can't use that pink. Is there another one? I don't reckon there is. And so because of that, I'm going to grab an already done pink piece like this. Let's see if we can put it in its correct orientation. Uh, we can't get that one there. Let's have a look at another one. That's better. Okay, we want it to be on that side, of course, not this side. That's why I need to get the pink there. So that pink will go across and place there flat. That little pink will go up and park itself there. So what we will have accomplished is we'll keep this one done and we'll fill this green into that position. So let's do that now. So we first do that move, then we move across, then we undo and move back and you can see that that piece is still completely done that green's done and now we've got that pink there now we're going to continue carrying this out until we've solved all of them so let's see what's next we've got that that needs doing I reckon it's just that one this one and this one so I'm going to try and make pieces on these ones that have two that are not yet done let's see if we can actually do that uh, we've got the, where does that grey need to go? Ah, here, there must be another piece. So, the only problem is I don't really want to fill that grey that I had. In fact, it's on the wrong side anyway, so that's fine. So, I think the next thing that I'll do, we'll do it on the right this time. Uh, anyway, well, it doesn't really matter, does it? I've got the yellow here. Can I find a yellow that's sticking up already? And it doesn't appear that I can, so I'm going to have to use something that's sticking up. The only things are the pink, the grey, the red, and another red. So that tells me, alright, I'll start with a red and find a red to fill, even if it's on one that's close to being done. That may be a red. It's going to be on the right, so it looks like at the moment that's the one I'm going to be doing. I'll be coming down the right here. OK, 
Okay, so that red will come down and place in that piece. The yellow needs to go across uh, probably to somewhere else. Yellow needs to go across and it'll place there and that pink will come back and place there. So once again we'll have uh, that placing and the yellow going across to here won't uh, it will in fact place in that yellow position which is good so we'll get two of them done. So this time on the right it's just the exact mirror. We do that, we turn that piece across and now undo. Turn it back, let's see what we've got. That one's done. That's left to go. We've got that piece with two. What else have we got? So that grey is going where? This is now just searching for pieces, trying to find what is missing. Ah, oh, there it is. That grey, wherever that was. Okay, the grey's going to there, the green's going to there, the red's going to there, and the pink's coming back to there. The fact that that seems like a four cycle, if you're wondering about that, that doesn't matter. It will not be an issue. Uh, so what we might try and do is... We're looking for the pieces that are sticking up to come down and place. So I've got a grey that can go to the grey one, or that red, but the red needs to go there. So, in fact, I'm going to Yep, I'm going to have the grey come down and place onto there. Alright, so that grey will place to there. This green needs to go across and can I use this one? I think I can. That green will come across and place in there and the red will go up to that position. So that looks like the go. Let's see what we've got. One piece here with one to go, one piece here with one to go. And in fact, we're now down to the point where if we don't have a three cycle, we're going to have this situation where it looks like we've got two to swap. Now, of course, we don't really have two to swap because we've got, say, the red could go to there, the pink might go to that pink, and that pink might go back to there. But the problem is the three cycle that we have is always going to do it's going to create two different orientations. In other words, we really need two pieces sticking up in order to be able to finish them off, and we don't have that. So, what we're going to do instead is uh, basically have a, a pink that's going to go across. Let's see if we can get it going to this. Yep, so that pink will go across to there. Now the red, we want to come back up to some piece up here which is the same colour. And that's going to be perfect which, with the piece that's up there. Um, so if we think about what's going to happen, that pink will go and place into there. The red will be sticking up here, and that pink will come down and be sticking up. Now that is going to be ideal to finish them off. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Here we go, the pink's done. We've got those two, and now we have this seeming swap, but they're sticking up, which is perfect. And that will definitely enable us to finish it off. Let's see what's going to be happening. Uh, we want... It looks initially like the red should come down here. But the problem is that pink is going to retain its orientation. We don't want that to happen. We actually want that pink over there because that orientation is going to change. It's going to flatten when it goes to there. So we say, what do we need that red to come down to? We need it to come down to an already flat red piece, such as that one there. So that red will come down and flatten. This red will stay flat over there and this pink will go up there and complete after all this time all of these things. So let's carry that final one out. There we go. And if we look around now, what we're going to see is that it's completely back to cube shape. There's nothing sticking out and each of these parts has been properly reduced. Now that certainly completes what I would say is the longest and um, 
most difficult stage of the solve. Well, the next stage is going to be to reduce these corners. In other words, that blue sticker there needs a small blue triangle on it. That yellow one needs a small yellow triangle. I wondered about this for quite a while. I couldn't work out how to do it. And then, I don't know, I woke up one morning, had a thought, and it worked. And that often happens, which is nice. So I'm going to show it to you on a solved cube first. Well, to carry this out, what we're going to do is turn the piece at the back and the piece at the front both around like that. And we're then going to move the two slices on the right downwards and now turn this front piece back to normal. Now what you'll notice from there is that the front corner has a different piece on it and that's all. We're now going to grab this corner here and we can either use that piece or that piece. It doesn't matter. It's going to be the same corner, obviously, just depending on which side you want to do. I'll do this piece because it's one extra move that's required. We want to put this piece up there. Replace that with this. So we'll bring it in with simple turns and this extra move we just need to turn that down face back to return this to where it was. Now having done that we return so that this is lined up and that's lined up and then we bring all of that back. We can flick back the corners. Now let's have a look what's happened. The first thing is the cube is not completely, uh, it's not remained solved but what we do know is that as far as these pieces here, these little triangle pieces on the ends of the corners, that, that and that have been cycled. And no other pieces like that have been cycled. In fact, the only other thing that's happened to the puzzle is uh, reduced pieces have been moved out of the way. So that is a, um, a three cycle of these pieces. It's pure as far as those pieces are concerned, but obviously it will still mess up the rest of the cube. Uh, that's what we're going to use to cycle home those pieces. Okay, so given that that's what we need to do, I'm going to start with this blue triangle here and I'm going to put in this position uh, a blue large piece that it needs to come across to. Now that's a green piece, so I'd like to go and place down here something that's green. And that means I'm going to place the blue and the green and that blue small piece will come back up to there. So I'll at least get two done. So here we go. Turn both of them and turn that down. Now return that so this corner can be replaced with this corner. Turn it back, return the pieces and there's the green that's been done. There's that blue that came from the bottom and down here somewhere we're going to find that blue, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, has been done. So that's got two of them done. That is all we need to do for all of them. And so I'll just do one more and uh, then cut through to the end. So for example, we've got a grey sitting here. Let's place uh, a grey piece up in this position so we can just turn that around. That's going to green. So we've got a green to receive it. That's a yellow. So again, that'll go up to there. Uh, if we can get three done in one hit, that's even better, but it's pretty unlikely. And we don't have that option at the moment, so away we go. And that's all done, and I should point out, you can see it hasn't disturbed any of the reduced edges that we've already done. So we're just going to continue doing that until we complete all of them. And I'll just cut back in here to show what to do if your piece is on this side and not that side. It's actually one move easier. So we've got the red going to this red and that pink piece needs to go to this pink. So we turn around, bring that down. And now instead of being on this side, it's here. So we just turn that across like that. So that the new piece comes to the top. All done. Let's keep going. And just finishing off the last one here. And yeah, we can look around and see that all of those corners are now reduced pretty simply. So the stage after this is to now go ahead and properly reduce what I'll call the Rubik's Cube edges. In other words, 
that green red large piece needs the two green red pieces put here. And the way I do this is just to find one of them, find it anywhere, and move around the bits. So there's, I'm going to do that one, move that around until I can just turn it like that. And where's the other one? At this stage, I haven't done any, so I can just turn the cube with abandon. If I can find it, there it is. And as I turn these things, it doesn't affect what's already been done. And so that one must go there, and that has now been properly reduced. And I'll just do random ones now. Just uh, So there's a blue-red. Do I have blue-red somewhere? Yeah, I'll do. Now, if I turn it down and it doesn't go, we'll find one of them soon, I'm sure. Uh, that one's done. What's next? Pink-green. That's the third one. Um, Grey-green. Here's a grey-green. Okay, like that one there. I turn that down and it's wrongly oriented, it just means it's got to go on the other side. Um, so I can just manipulate these around until I get it onto its correct side. Where's the other grey-green piece? Ah, oh, that's already done, so the other one is there. Now when I get four of them, what I'm generally going to do is put them on one face. So, where are they? There's one, there's one. Let's put them on this face and there's the fourth as if I'm making the edges on a normal cube because now I can just kind of have a look here in the middle layer and see what's got to go so there's a gray gray pink that goes there the other gray pink is there so I can just um, move around these pieces in the middle layer and keep the ones that I've already done on the bottom So there's that one done. What's this? Yellow, blue. Yep, that's right. Um, I can reverse the orientation just by doing that. There's yellow, blue done. Grey, blue. Yep, that's okay. Now, um, I want to try and put them close together. So I'm going to move the one that I've done over to here. Next to that one. I've got to get the grey, blue reversed. So that I can put its other piece on, which is over there. Now here's the fourth one, that's pink yellow, that's the wrong one, so this here must be the right one. Now I want to reverse this, so I'm going to take it out onto the top layer and bring it back in by turning its position up. All of this is just standard moves. There we go, I can make that. Now I've got four in the middle layer, and I want to still use this piece here to make the others, so I'm going to place one of them up at the back here. Just put it out of the way. So now I've got blue-pink. Wrong one. Where's the other one? Around there. Again, I want to reverse the orientation of this piece. And that's another one, so that can then be put over in that back corner, or back position. And that leaves me three to go, three of these things to go. Now let's see what happens with this one. We've got one that's half done, one that's half done, one that's not done at all. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually reverse the orientation of this piece here. And to do that, because I want to protect that grey red. To do that, I'm going to use these three pieces and do something similar to what I was just doing. Turn it out and then move its position and turn it onto its position. And that's reversed that. Let's see what happens now if I turn it around. I can certainly do that and it'll complete that one. Doesn't do anything there. That's the same with that. What I'd like to do is actually get this one to have one at least that's working. So because of that I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to reverse the orientation of this piece. Like so. Now I can turn that back on 
and we'll see what we've got. And this is good, this is going to be a three cycle, so again I want that flipped over. So that you can see one, two, three, simply turn into place and all of those edges are now reduced. Of course, as you might have guessed, that doesn't always happen. And if you've been playing with this yourself, you may have found the following. And that is this situation where we've got two of these parts that just need to swap. So the red yellows need to go down there. And those pink blues need to go up there. And no amount of turning, because that one's already done, is going to change any of that. So there's a different approach that I take. And what that is, is to just to recognize that what's actually happened is that the two chiral edges are actually involved in a 2 plus 2 swap. In other words, clearly that pink, blue and the red, yellow need to swap positions, as do these other pieces. But what have they swapped with? Well, for example, they've swapped with two green triangles because they are pieces that can go in the same position. So what we need to do is firstly to do a swap like that and as an example of it I'm going to say All right, well let's put this one back here into that position. You remember the three cycle we did before where the piece came from here to here to here. Where was the other one? That there. So we're going to move the red yellow to the blue pink initially and will involve this yellow piece. So how do we do that? Just five of these. And if you remember, it leaves everything else intact, just moves around those pieces. So that uh, red yellow is now in the correct position, even though it's here, we did turn that around. So what I mean is, if I just turn that back, you can see that's now in the correct position there. And what do we do now? Well, we say, I need that blue pink, if I think where that's got to go, that's got to go back to there. And I want to involve another yellow corner piece. So let's think how that's going to happen. Uh, that blue pink, because the movement is going this way, I can, of course, reverse that movement, go here to here to here, as I need to, simply by reversing those moves. So I want the blue pink to go to that position. I'm going to move that down. Then that yellow is going to go to that position where there should be a yellow little corner. And so I'll turn that up as a setup, and we see the blue pink will go there, that yellow will go there, and that yellow will come back down to here. So I've just involved... Uh, swap of these two yellow pieces as well. So because I want the movement to go that way, instead of turning this first, I'm going to turn this first. And I'll still do five of them. There we go. I can undo that setup move and we'll see that all of the corners are still completely reduced. And what I now have, if I go and let's say we've turned, uh, we can replace these in a minute. We've got the blue pink, let's actually put it there, blue pink in its correct position. The, where's the other one? The red yellow is down here. So I might actually just go and put them correctly again, just to show, <clears throat> excuse me, just to show that they have actually been uh, moved. So that red, yellow, where did that go? That's that one. Uh, we can... In fact, we'll get these last three pieces into their position. So let's just... That one, that one, and... There we go. Now we've got the last three that we need to do. Let's see what's going on here. Um, I've got three that can turn around as long as I reverse that orientation. So let's just do that, just like we were doing before. Make that green yellow. And this one here, all right, 
Now, you remember that we started with two needing to swap. What we've done at the moment is that that's been completed and we now have the yellow, red and the blue, pink chiral edges in their correct positions. The only thing left to do is to deal with these pieces here. Well, we're going to do that exactly the same way that we did previously. So, for example, I'll put that piece at the back there and I'll say, rightio, this blue needs to go over here. It's going to retain its orientation. It needs to go to a blue piece. So let's firstly get that sorted. Um, carry out one of these routines. So that retains that blue. Now we've got some pieces that are sticking up so we can start going and actually placing them. Um, so the let's move that one around to there see if we can make some headway here we'll have a red piece that we'll need down here which will go and fill that position that yellow will come to here and the blue will go to there uh, so we'll certainly get one of them done straight away Now that leaves us that one, that one, and those two there. So the next thing we want to do is make sure we get one of these done. Uh, so we will place that one. We're going to fill it with that blue, which will retain its orientation. And this other piece, yep, we'll have that coming up to there. So we're just cycling around the pieces until we end up with a three cycle or a swap, which is what we want. And of course, this is just the same as what we were doing earlier. Let's see what we've got now. Yep, and we've got pretty much exactly what we need. We've got a yellow that has to go there, the red has to go there, the pink has to go there. So we just have to set the pieces up so that they're in the correct formation. So that yellow is going to retain its orientation. It needs to uh, go to this piece. So we'll put that over there. And the other piece, the third piece, is that red. And that just needs to be placed up here. So we just have to get it into that position first. And we're going to come down the right this time. And so we'll do the mirror. Okay. And that's now done. Now, if we have a look and see what has been achieved, we've now reduced all of these pieces. So that of course only matters if you end up with say two of these things needing to switch instead of a nice three cycle at the end. That having been done it's now time to go and solve the reduced cube. Now I'm going to say solve it as you would normally solve a cube however you like. I am going to solve it edges first and corners last I guess with a slight difference here. Uh, but there is one twist in the tail that happens near the end, that can happen near the end. So uh, it's not necessarily quite over just yet. So I'm going to start with the grey face and basically make my grey cross. Okay, that's done. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and place three of these corners and I'm just going to do that to make the corners easier at the end. Doesn't really matter which three. And there's nothing mysterious about this, it's just a standard. If you solve your cubes differently then go ahead and solve them differently. Uh, now I've got that fourth corner there, I'm going to turn it upside down and I'm going to use that to help me build three middle layer edges. So I'll turn that around underneath. Now I can place the pink blue and that corner there, it doesn't matter if that's disturbed. That one's done, what's next? Blue, red, well that's in position but flipped. We know how to deal with that. And the last one, the red-green. And when I turn this back, what I'll see is that almost all of that middle layer is done. Now I can use that slot to complete 
the edges on the top uh, so I can get that yellow red one there looking to place the yellow blue one now and that will leave me three edges could be a few options for that but as this is not a 3 by 3 solve uh, I'll just go ahead and complete them that's all the edges done and now what I want to do is just use the corner piece series to solve the rest of the corners As I say in pretty much all of my videos, if you don't know about the Corner Piece series, have a look in the description of any of my videos for a video about the Corner Piece series. Now that's going to leave me, what, three corners to solve. Let's see if we can get this done. That's going to go across to there. This is a bit of a pain of a setup, so what I'm going to do is actually just solve. Yeah, I'll just place one of them for sure let's see what we got and we're left with two corners that need to twist so this one's got to go anti-clockwise this one's got to go clockwise so I'm going to put them into the up front left up back left position and carry out the normal routine that I use. And when that's done, all is well. However, I did say there was a sting in the tail. I'm going to set up for that now. And this is it, something that is entirely possible on this puzzle, a single twisted corner. And it's just the actual corner piece itself that's been twisted. Now, fortunately, it's not a big deal to get out of this. It's um, What we're going to do first is just twist the corner back into its correct orientation. Now, obviously, that leaves these other pieces out. So the first pieces we're going to deal with are these sort of side pieces here. And the way we're going to do that is to note that if I turn the corner like that, I actually get the two reds together, or I can get the two yellows together. And what that means is that I basically want to replace or put the yellows where the reds are and the reds where the blues are. So first of all, I'm going to just use something else to turn those yellows off. Remember the yellows had to go where the reds were, so now I can bring them back. The reds had to go where the blues were, so now I'll put the reds there. And finally, the only thing that's left is those blues go into position, and as that's done, this piece that I was using goes back there, turn it around, and those pieces have been replaced. And that means the only three pieces left are these three pieces here. And well, you'll remember from earlier in the solve that we can move any three of these sort of pieces if they're in that position. So the first thing I'm thinking is, okay, well, what's got to go where? The yellow-red's got to go down here. That blue-yellow's got to go to here. So what I want is to get that blue-yellow piece into that position and to get that blue red piece into that position there. Then I can three cycle those pieces home. So the first thing I'll do is put the blue yellow at the back. So we'll turn that off, move the blue yellow there, and return. Now I've got to work out a way to get this piece into that position without moving that out of the way. So what I'll do is just turn it back, put it into position, and bring it forward. And now I've got those three ready to cycle home. We know how to do that. Five of these. Okay, well that's all done. And you can see that we just need to undo some setups now. And so to undo them, Turn that back into position. Now it does disturb other stuff, but if I'm lucky, 
I've tried this before. If I work out uh, how to get the first two layers basically done, let's see if I can manage that. There we go, like that. Now what I think will happen now is that that piece is in position as I go to replace that yellow green over there. All the rest of it will also fall into position. If you're not that lucky, you just resolve it as a normal cube. But as you can see, that has dealt with that single twisted corner and this dreidel 3x3 is solved.